What is going on guys, it's your boy Edward from Boxing Fanatical and we're going to talk about the Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor press conference 3 held in New York City, Brooklyn, the Barclays Center. Stay tuned. So let's go ahead and recap this press conference. Like I said in the last video, uh, to, that Toronto's press conference was not going to be top. And even though they went to New York, you know, the crowd in New York, man, what's wrong with you guys? It's like you don't even know the crowd. You can't control a New York crowd. It's hilarious. New York crowds are like uncontrollable. Like, you'll say something, and they'll be like, oh, I don't care. And then you're, like, not saying anything, and then they're like, ah. And then you're like, and then somebody's like, boo. And it's like, what? Who, why are you booing? Who, what? I'm confused. Okay, so, anyways, New York crowd, get it together, man. Seriously, get it, get it together. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about this. I took notes. I learned my lesson from the last press conference, conference number two. I didn't take notes. And um, it wasn't good for me in the memory department because it was too many zingers and too many things happening. So anyways, let's go ahead, recap this press conference. I'm gonna try to run it down uh, as quickly as possible. So May, um, Conor McGregor, let's talk about his outfit. His outfit is uh, basically no shirt. He had no shirt, that was his outfit and he had the mink coat. I wanna say mink coat, but Conor McGregor himself said that it was a polar bear co coat. And uh, he, <laughs> first of all, Connor, you're in New York City, like the one of the, like the most liberal vegan kind of locations that you can be at. They're not gonna take kindly to you saying that you have a polar bear coat on, and you actually could hear the crowd. The, there was a lull, like it, it was like, like they were like, <sighs> once he said, "This is polar bear," it was kind of like all the vegans came out all the vegans you know voiced their their uh their opinions at, at that point so if you definitely not the spot if you want to win the crowd over to say something like your coat is made out of polar bear um <laughs> anyways with conor mcgregor he could he could pull off not wearing a shirt because the thing is he has designs all over his body so it's like you know it's whatever He'll just wear the designs of his tattoos, and that's it, it. It gives it, it makes it still look cool somehow. If Mayweather was to try to go in there without wearing a shirt, it would just look kind of funny because it's like, why are you not wearing a shirt? You look weird, you know, like this is not the fight. But with Connor, because he has those tattoos, it fits. So he was looking pretty stylish. All right, so the uh, first thing I noticed is that the crowd was very pro Connor. It was a very pro Connor crowd. They booed Mayweather, but once again, it was New York, so they were weird with the way and what, with when and how they booed. Uh, so Mayweather, uh, Connor enters, just normal entry, whatever, came in, strut, wearing crazy outfit, the polar bear coat, you know, uh, no shirt. And then Mayweather walks in with the Irish flag. All right, so Mayweather wore the Irish flag. This guy knows how to get under Conor McGregor's skin. And you know what's cool about him wearing the Irish flag is like it gives continuity to the entire press conference uh, fiasco. So it's like he wore it. He wore it in the last press conference and Conor was like, you do touch that thing and I'm going to, you know, you're going to get hurt. But now he's wearing it. And Conor doesn't have access to his bag so easily because it's not next to Conor McGregor. And then he, he's like, yeah, I'm wearing it now. What you going to do now? Like, that's the that's the vibe that I got from Floyd Mayweather. And uh, it, it, it's cool because it gives continuity to the entire press conference scene. It's like, this is the episode three. Like, it's, it's episodic. It, it really feels like that. So, um, so uh, shout outs to Mayweather for coming in with the Irish flag. That was pretty smart to get under Connor's skin and I think it worked. It looked like Connor was pretty upset or pretty bothered or flustered by Mayweather. Um, uh, Espinoza was speaking. Espin uh, first of all, they uh, announced that the tickets will go on sale July 24th. So if you have the bank and you have the time, you can go ahead and buy those tickets so you can see Connor versus Mayweather live. And also, Steven Espinosa went up there and he also mentioned that the all access will 
start July 28th. So if you're looking for all access, July 28th is when that starts. Uh, so you'll be seeing the whole behind the scenes, the whole, it's the 24 seven basically of Showtime. Um, and, and, and they go ahead and explain, you know, what's going on leading up to the fight. Very interesting in a very cinematic, you know, way with cameras and, and all these different, you know, elements to make it really, really hyped. And it's, it's always good. I love the all access and this one is definitely going to be one to watch, uh, because it is the uh the anomaly of mayweather versus conor mcgregor uh so that's that uh, i also noticed Javante davis was was in mayweather's entourage he looked like he was soaking it in loving the moment uh <laughs> so conor goes up and it's just like it, it kind of seemed like he ran out of things to say i think he 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 didn't really know how to top what he did in the last press conference. Plus, the crowd wasn't really fully... They, it was a pro Connor crowd, for sure. But they weren't, like, full, wholeheartedly behind him like the, the like Toronto was. Toronto, like, he, he said anything. It was like... <sighs> like, it was, they, were, they were there. Uh, New York, they were like, man, you better say something good. I mean, no, no, we're not. No, we're not cheering for that. That, I right, this half of the crowd is going to cheer. This half is not going to cheer. Now we're going to cheer. It's like, come on, man. Like, just just get, get, keep the flow. Let the flow happen. Like, you guys don't understand in New York. When you, like, I'm, I'm from New York. Now, I know how New York crowds are. But you don't understand that when you do all that, like, picky and choosiness, you, you kill the momentum and flow of whatever, you know, whatever's on stage or whatever's being presented. Uh, just go full force with whatever. If you like somebody, go with him. If you don't, you know, but pick something. Uh, so then, uh, not much, not much to say about what uh, Conor McGregor did. Uh, but uh, I did notice that when <laughs> Espinosa went up, Floyd Mayweather hugged Espinosa as a wink wink to the whole uh <laughs> to the whole thing of McGregor going at Espinosa. And then McGregor goes at Espinosa again and I'm starting to think that this is uh this is a play to make it a UFC versus boxing. Like to make it bigger than just Conor versus Mayweather. They want to elevate it to like this is boxing versus UFC. So this is like Showtime executives are against Dana White and me. Like it's us coming in their world and battling them complete. Like the entire boxing, like you know, spectrum. Like it's, it's UFC versus boxing, and I think that's the play that they're going for, and that's the reason why he's attacking Steven Espinosa. And that's the that's the unique dynamic and the unique element that 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 only Connor could do because he is from the UFC. He's not from boxing, so it makes sense. No one else can do that. That's the reason why execs don't really get hammered during these press conferences. And then this is the reason why it's happening in this one, because it's smart. Use what you have. Use what makes you different. Um, he went ahead and also gave Floyd the 444 album from Jay-Z. It felt flat. Like, nobody cared. Um, the whole time he was doing it, Floyd was on Instagram Live. And he had Connor on Instagram Live. And Connor was, like, talking into his Instagram Live. It was... It was kind of cool, but uh, it wasn't like it wasn't no zingers were go it wasn't anything good. Um, it was just okay stuff. Uh, and then after, of course, after they try to follow Toronto, that's not easy. Uh, so after that, um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to Floyd. Floyd coming out and and doing his his part. So Floyd Floyd goes out and starts talking. Uh, to Conor McGregor, plays music, time, he had timed music, um, he, he did the tap out, tap out, tap out, you know, tap out, and he was, you know, tapping out, he, he was doing the tap, tap in on the floor, or, or, or what have you, so he played the song, and then he referenced the strippers that, <laughs> he referenced the strippers that Conor McGregor referenced in, uh, in the Toronto thing, of course, giving it the continuity, you know, like the set, the third episode, he referenced the strippers and then took the money. So it's like the money, it's like Mayweather's money bag part two, like in episode three. Now, now instead of just holding the money, he's throwing the money in the air and he's throwing it at Conor McGregor. So it's like floating and everything. McGregor picks one up. And he's like, these are just dollars. Uh, 
but if McGregor, you know, ever been to a strip club, that's usually all it is, it's, it's dollars. No one's stealing. Doesn't matter how much money you have, you just wanna see the the uh, the effects of having paper fly in the air. So it doesn't really matter if it's a dollar or it's twenty dollars, but if you can get the same effect with dollar, it makes much more sense to use that. Uh, so um, yeah, so anyways, he went ahead and did that and he throws the money in the air and then he does something uh, very weird. He, at one point he gets his entourage to come up right up to Conor McGregor's face and it just looked crazy. I'm like, I, I, he probably has something planned. He probably has something planned because he looked like he came in there with like a blueprint of what he was gonna do. I mean, the music playing and all that, that's all per, like he, you can't, that doesn't happen. Like DJ doesn't just, telepathically know that he's gonna do the tap out thing and start playing the music so obviously Mayweather came in there with a plan or a set a blueprint and I think he was gonna try to do something but then it was thwarted because uh, Conor McGregor's entourage came up and there was like a little like scuffle or whatever and uh, between not between Conor McGregor and Mayweather but between Mayweather's entourage and Conor McGregor's entourage um, so who won this press conference I'm going to go ahead and say Mayweather. So Mayweather won, to me, the first press conference. Mayweather also won the last one, the third one. And Conor McGregor won the second one. Um, Conor definitely looked a little bit out of his element. He did know his, you know, his rap history, his hip-hop history. He did know, you know, he understood that jay Z's from Brooklyn, but... I don't think that, you know, it's like it's a consensus that everyone likes the uh, 444 album. So he, he kind of did. It was a misstep there. Um, Mayweather, he won with the throwing the money. That was really that was, you know, like the aesthetics of that. Just seeing it in the air and falling on, on, on Conor McGregor. Awesome. Coming out with the Irish flag, con doing the continuity of the last press conference. Awesome. Um, Mayweather's punchlines were much more crisp and sharper. It seemed much more organic. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this press conference to Mayweather. They got one more stop. They're going to London. And that is it. And I think in London, I mean, you're in London. So it's like the gentleman's place, you know. It's not New York City where it's all about like cracking jokes and stuff. These people are dropping F-bombs like there's no tomorrow. And I feel bad <laughs> if it's being, if it is being, posted live on fox sports or whatever it is on tv i'm not sure if it is i don't know for sure because i've been watching it on uh showtime's live live stream on uh on youtube but if it is being shown on tv boy that sensor team has a lot of work to do they have their hands full they they, they better have a team of like 20 people already willing and able to click that sensor beat button right before right when the the curses come in and within that five second delay before you see it on on your tv screen uh so that is it don't forget really important numbers here really important dates the 24th of july tickets go on sale the 28th of july all access starts and then you know it looks like if they're starting all access on the 28th um, it appears that they may want to be doing, they're probably going to do a four day all access. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and end it right there. That was the recap. I think Mayweather one. So we got Mayweather two, two to one. So the tiebreaker is going to be the fight. If Conor McGregor can pull it off and get the, uh, the win in the last press conference. Uh, so that's that's it that's the whole uh recap for the press conference number three in new york city the barclays center uh you guys showed up but you guys were weird bro you guys were very very weird uh it's your boy edward box fanatico i will see you tomorrow peace out